In this video, we're going to be going over 10 scientifically proven ways to run faster, whether it's through your training or through genetic advantages or disadvantages. So we're going to go ahead and start the video right away. First thing we're going to go into is going to be more of the things that you can train. Then we're going to go into the genetic advantages and disadvantages. So the first thing is going to be the hamstring. So the volume of the hamstring is a big thing that will indicate your sprinting speed, your sprinting performance. And then many of us know that creating more horizontal force when sprinting directly correlates to being able to run faster and the hip extensors and the hamstrings are a big part of being able to contribute to that force production. We're going to talk more about force production in a bit, but something that ends up being really important is that horizontal force, so not necessarily the vertical force, while that's important as well, but the horizontal force, especially when accelerating, is really important, which is primarily a hamstring-driven hip extension. The ability to have stronger hamstrings or more active hamstrings, and then also associating that with faster times. Another scientifically proven predictor of your sprinting speed or sprinting capabilities has to do with your hip range of motion and your spine range of motion. So it has been identified that a positive relationship is observed between the hip and lumbar spine extension angles at toe off when running so essentially that when your foot is coming off the ground the more extension you're able to have in the hip and in the low back correlates to a faster running speed another thing that ends up being important is the hip angle so as you're going through your sprinting if you both of these essentially say the same thing but your hip angle wants to get up to 70 to 80 degrees which means that how high are you able to lift your knee so if you're at a what would be 90 degree angle, that would be the knee the same height as the hip, where it shows here that around 70 to 80 degrees is where you want to be or what a lot of the top athletes have. And so if you're not able to get to that position, then you're basically not able to run as fast. And then another thing is again, going into the hip extension angles as you're also running, having the pelvis be able to anteriorly tilt by 20 degrees is also a big predictor. So being able to just have the ability for the pelvis to move forward and back, as well as the spine to be able to extend is really important when it comes to being able to run fast. Another important predictor, and this may not be super surprising, is going to be your body fat percentage. And so the lower your body fat percentage is, or if you have a BMI that's around 22 to 26, that ends up being a big predictor when it comes to being able to run fast or within a 7 to 10% Body fat percentages, even to me, that might be a little bit high. Some of those guys are probably even closer to maybe 5% with their body fat percentage. But there's a, you know studies that show that around 7 to 10 is also uh, applicable as well. And another part of that was, and I, and I thought this was interesting as well, is that a lot of times the really skinny guys are not as fast. While athletes that are a little bit bigger and have a little bit more muscle on them are actually faster. So it's not necessarily how much do you weigh, but really how much of your weight is muscle. And that's why the body fat percentage is really important, seven to 10%. But you also wanna have a pretty big PWR, which is essentially how much power you have based off of your weight, power weight ratio. So that's an important predictor here. And the fourth scientifically proven way to improve your speed is gonna be improving your upper body strength. So there's a lot of different things that talk about how your upper body strength is important to your fitness, being able to run fast, and then also just information about how your ability to coordinate within the upper body is going to impact your legs. The amount of energy you're able to generate in the upper body is gonna impact your legs. And I also think in the main reason I wanted to look this up is because I think that having more shoulder extension and arm extension is important to be able to run fast, which is essentially your tricep muscles and your lats. I actually think that's more important than like your chest and your pec. They don't have a lot of scientific data to support that. And so I just thought I would show you the upper body strength and the importance of having upper body strength but I do think at the end of the day, a lot of it goes into how much strength do you have within the arm extensors. Chin-ups is obviously much more of a kind of arm and extension kind of lat type of an exercise. Pull-ups is, is more lat, but the upper back in general is a really important part of being able to do a chin-up. And so you have to be strong within the arm extensors in order to run fast. And the next somewhat scientifically proven way to improve your speed is gonna be through core strengthening. And the reason I say somewhat is because I actually found mixed reviews in terms of just general health, general fitness, core strength is a great predictor of that. But in terms of actually 
predicting sprinting speed, there's not as much scientific data around that, even though there is a ton of articles and people and trainers and coaches and everything that agrees that having a stronger core does result to faster sprinting. And even like Usain Bolt talks about this, a lot of even top sprinters talk about how important the core stability is. I do think that if you have a weak core, you're not gonna be able to run as fast. There is definitely a correlation to just being a overall more fit person with having a strong core. Those are gonna be really the main five that are gonna be more muscular related. The next ones are gonna be more focused on parts of the body that need to get trained or parts of your maybe general performance that can be improved. The first one's gonna be eliminating foot contact time. Uh, essentially, how much time are you spending during your leg cycle is usually pretty similar but there's a big difference between how much time athletes are spending with their foot on the ground, as well as how much force they're generating into the ground, which is the second one. So the ability to generate a lot of force into the ground when they're sprinting and also rebound very quickly or spend very little time on the ground are two critical things that you have to be able to train and understand how to do in order to run fast and as we're talking about this, there's a bunch of different articles that we are linking to show you some of the scientific data that supports those theories. And this is the last one that has to do with what you can do within your training, scientifically proven training methods, we could say, to make it so you can improve your speed. And that's gonna just be the broad jump. So there seems to be more correlation to having a better broad jump than a better vertical jump when it comes to improve your speed. Not that a vertical jump, or if you're good with the vertical jump, you can't be fast. There just seems to be more of a correlation to having a strong broad jump with being able to have maximum sprint speed. And I think that has to do with what we were talking about before with the hip range of motion, spine range of motion, just because you have to have more extension in the hips, in the lumbar spine in order to have a better broad jump, where the vertical jump is a little bit more just lower body related, just having a stronger lower body and more strength within like the calves, things like that. And again, there's a lot of information that proves that the strength within the lower leg does correlate to running fast as well. The last two are gonna be things that are a little bit more genetic in nature. I do think that the first one, number nine out of this list is gonna be like strong feet and balance, but that also goes into, to me, having a high arch, having a, a bigger foot, having a higher calcaneous bone. I'm putting all this into one group just because it has to do with the foot. I felt like it would be weird to kind of separate strong feet and uh, high arch just because I think that those two things are correlated with each other. So if you have a flatter arch or a weaker arch and or a weaker foot, then generally you're gonna have not as much balance, not as much control uh, of the foot and just a weaker foot in general. And so. I do think that there's a correlation with having strong feet with having a high arch. Then with that, there is some of the things with like having a bigger foot and being able to run faster as well as the calcaneus bone. If you have a higher calcaneus bone or a longer calcaneus bone or a bigger calcaneus bone can directly correlate to sprinting speed. Not that everybody that has a uh, bigger calcaneus bone is fast. And then the last one is gonna be longer legs. And so there's not as much research that can verify this 100%. There are athletes that are able to run fast that don't have necessarily the longest legs, but if you have longer legs, you have a greater advantage to be able to get to higher sprinting speeds. Now, shorter legs generally mean a little bit faster acceleration, uh, which can be still beneficial. And the world champion, Christian Coleman's only 5'8", uh, and even no, Lyles, who just won the 100, is only 5'10", so you don't necessarily have to be tall, but obviously Usain Bolt being the fastest ever at 6'5", just the amount of speed he's able to generate is something that is very unique and just shows that a little bit taller person just has a little bit more potential for what they can do in terms of their top speed. So. That's the video, thanks for watching. If you wanna check out some of the other videos that we have, you can check those out here. We have one on the arch of the foot and then we have another one on the position of your pelvis and how those both will relate to your sprinting speed. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.